Oh, you wild beasts. This is a computer for everybody. It's not for the 1%. Show me Bob's. Show me Bob's and keys. This is bobkeys.com. We are working with them to bring you an additional 25% off on products like Windows 10 Pro. Use coupon code TS25 and you're gonna save 25% off the already good price of 1808, bringing it down by another four and a half dollars. You can save money on Windows 10 Home and also 25% off as well with Office 2019. Now, once you get your key, it'll appear in your account. Just copy that. Hit start and type activation and activation settings will come up. Click on change product key and then paste your product key here. Or if it's that's not there, it may just say add product key or update product key if you have not already activated. Just paste it in there and then you will fully be able to use Windows 10. Thanks to bobkeys.com. And now to our regularly scheduled program. All right, so we have a new chipset from AMD. It is a limited chipset for people who are budget conscious but still want like new stuff some new bells and whistles and i have here the uh, a520mh version 6 that's from biostar so with this motherboard it checks a lot of boxes that make me very happy in a budget board first off this is a form factor that doesn't get enough love it's micro atx right so we can put it in a small case but we still get some extra options that you wouldn't get with a, an itx system right 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 you got Moron! Talk about the give and takes when you're going with a board that's not made for overclocking and it's more of a budget board, but it's still new. So first off, two RAM slots, not four. But how many people does that affect? Like 30% of the people out there, maybe? I don't know. If you're building a computer now, you can go ahead and grab some pretty big DIMMs. Get two DIMMs. I've only got two DIMMs in my main system, but they're 32 gigabyte each. You don't, you're not going to do that in this system. You have one GPU slot, one 16-speed big. You have one 16-speed PCI Express 3.0, not 4.0, 3.0 GPU slot. We have one M.2 slot, and again, that's PCI Express 3. And then we have a couple of one-speed PCI Express slots here. Now, note, if you put a big fat graphics card in there, it's going to cover the first uh, one-speed PCI Express slot. So you'll still have more expansion than you would on an ITX board, but it's a give and take there. And they couldn't move that to the other side of the GPU because that's where the M.2 goes. I guess they could have put the M.2 in the back, but... When you start doing stuff like that, you start to raise the price of the board, and I don't think that's going to affect a lot of people. You know, not being able to run two GPUs, that's going to affect like less than 1% of you wealthy folk out there who are already like, why are you even watching this? You're probably sitting there on your d dual 3090s right now just being like, yes. Now looking at the V-Regs, there's not a lot going on there. It does support overclocking with the RAM up to 4933. That's what they've tested. Uh, we're not going to go that high because of the prices. Um, but as you can see there, the V-Regs are, well, they're kind of there. Not a lot of cooling going on in the V-Regs. Luckily, Biostar has given us a pretty cool uh, piece of software that we can use in Windows to monitor our temperatures. And I noticed it was, no matter what I was doing, it was always within spec. No overclocking. It does not support it out of the box, even though you could go in and mess with some things if you want to do under the hood. I noticed I could do that in the BIOS, but, you know, or the UEFI. Let's take a look at the ins and outs in the back. Not a huge number of USB compared to some of the boards out there, but you still have six. And um, that's going to be fine, especially if you have like a, uh, a hub or whatever for any additional ones. Got your gigabit Ethernet on the back, and then we've got our audio ports. Got our video ports there if you're running a, an APU instead of a regular CPU. And that will support 4K through it at HDMI right there. And then check that out. I love when you get legacy on my new stuff. We've got two PS2 ports for mouse and keyboard or whatever else would work with that. So that is going to be the base here. Now, when you're building a gaming rig, the, the main thing is going to be your GPU. And you'll see we'll put most of our money into the GPU, the secondary the CPU, and then the motherboard. You could take this GPU and the CPU and put them into a different motherboard that's way more expensive and you get almost the same experience. So that's one thing that's nice about um, boards that are in this price range that cut a bunch of features that a lot of people don't use anyway, is you're just cutting the price, right? And if you need more bells and whistles, then you're gonna to need to buy a more expensive board and that's just the way it is. Let's look at the CPU. We're gonna use the Ryzen 3 3100 because it's quad core, turbos all the way up to 3.9 and it's a really good price for a lot of speed. And that's pretty much just the bottom line there. Not an APU, not really made for overclocking. This is not really a productivity CPU. I mean, you can do a lot of stuff, but if you're doing some like heavy game dev or 3D stuff or something like that, you are gonna want like more cores. But for most gamers, four cores is going to be plenty. And for most desktop users, it's going to be just fine. Now for the graphics card, 
uh, grabbed the Zotac GTX 1650 for a couple of different reasons. First off, the cooling on this is really nice. And this is a very sweet spot card when it comes to 1080p gaming at about 60 FPS. And we'll show you the benchmarks in just a second. So I like this card quite a bit. Also want to mention you can check out eBay right now. And especially since the RTX 30 series cards are coming out. Just keep checking eBay because there's going to be a lot of stuff on there. Start checking your rich neighbor's dumpsters. I actually had a rich friend who threw away like some really high-end cards because like, you know, he had the regular version and then the TI came out and he just threw it away. I was like, start watching for that kind of stuff. People are going to be selling stuff they don't need for cheap. Now let's talk about storage. So in this build, I just grabbed a 240 gigabyte SSD from off my shelf. But for you, I'm actually going to recommend to grab an M.2 because the prices are about the same and M.2 is going to give you a lot more speed. The Silicon Power is very well reviewed. I have not used it, but it is Gen 3 by 4. Decent speed boost over your standard SATA. Go ahead and install Windows on that, and for $37.99, you can't go wrong with that. Now, just a little bit more speed here in a drive that I personally used and love. This 256 gigabyte M.2 from Saverint, it's the Rocket. That one's a little bit more expensive, but for 12 bucks, you'll get one that I've used, so I can vouch for it. But it's also going to be a little bit faster on the read and write. For most people, it's not going to matter at all, so don't stress if it's, you know, a big deal. Keep the money in the GPU. Now, when it comes to just storage for games and stuff like that, I'm actually going to go ahead and recommend using a regular spinning hard drive, even though it's a little slower uh, when you're loading your games. But we're going to get a 7200 speed Barracuda. It's a really good price for two terabytes. You can install a lot of games and throw a lot of media on that uh, and be just fine. And the 7200 speed drives are going to be faster uh, for sure when it comes to loading compared to a 5400 speed like a western digital green which is what i threw into this computer because it was on the shelf let's talk about those two memory slots what are these things doing these things attacked my village yesterday so in this computer i'm actually using 2666 speed corsair vengeance memory and corsair vengeance memory is totally fine if you can find a good deal on like some of this it's going to be great but these AMD CPUs do like faster memory and you'll get a couple extra FPS in your games if you go with like 3000 um, megahertz or a little bit more than that. But again, once it gets up into like really expensive stuff, it's like, no, I'd rather have that money in my GPU. So I, I like to cap it off around 3000, 3200, depending on the price and what you can afford. But the Patriot Viper Blackout, I love this stuff got some of it this is really good ram i like to get 16 gigabytes of ram so it can multitask a little bit but you can actually game on eight gigabytes of ram if you're really really hard up but try to go for 16 gigabytes if you can now you might have noticed what i've done here there's actually an optical drive in this it's just a standard dvd burner that i got for like 20 bucks i forget what brand it is maybe it's a light on i don't know i had it sitting around this is completely optional it's for a lot of people who want to collect older games and be able to install them and play them um from their you know their regular old install discs and stuff like that so i got that just for that not for watching movies it's for installing old games on this machine all right next up let's talk about the power supply we've got the cooler master mwe 550 white yeah it's called the white but it's it's not white it comes black and um, this is not a modular psu because of the price i mean so you are going to have some extra cables that you'll need to tuck um you know different places I don't like cable management. I don't really care. I didn't really do a very good job. I'm very sorry. You can cable manage them if you like, but the case I've got doesn't really have a lot of room on the backside. It's made for silence, not for cable management and sexiness, but whatever. Now for the case, I would recommend this Fractal Zine Core 1100 case. It's small, not a lot of bells and whistles, decent airflow, but built well. And Fractal makes really good stuff and a really good price. You can install a couple of your uh, three and a half inch drives, three two and a half inch drives. It'll fit the motherboard, all the expansion. Uh, the power supply goes on top, which is a little weird, a little retro, old school. But we do have a couple of different optical drive slots in the front, so there's that. And then plus we have our USB in the front as well. The option that I went with is a little more expensive, but I was able to grab one on eBay. It's the Silencio 352 from Cooler Master. Um, and also this is a very simple case, but it has some noise dampening stuff. You'll, you'll see the foam, like the bitumen foam on the inside of the panels and everything. I wanted this to be a little quieter. Uh, since I'm not really too worried about the thermals, I'm not overclocking, it's gonna run completely fine within spec. And plus I've always got that Biostar program to monitor my thermals while I'm gaming and stuff. All right, so that's the system. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hang out and talk about playing these games. I'm not gonna do like the regular thing where I show the graphs on the screen for the benchmarks and everything. We're actually gonna sit down and play these games together and talk about 
the different options to to get to that 60 fps like changing a few uh, things here and there and just talk about how some of these emulators play and that sort of thing because i think this is um not really a video where i want to just be like holy shit it's you know 3000 fps at 4k that's not what we're doing here we're trying to like find a nice sweet spot for budget and performance and uh in order to do that we should tweak some of these settings and stuff so let's check out the performance of this machine running doom at uh, 1920 by 1080 on high settings and we're getting 79 or so fps i could probably turn some things up but i don't need to all my filters are high i'm running on vulcan so doom is running really well on high you cannot turn this up to ultra because there's not enough video memory even though i bet if you changed some of your shaders you might be able to get away with it so what are you doing over here i'll get i'll take both your arms and then i'll kill you with a machine gun can i take this guy out with a machine gun sure can so with shadow of the tomb raider i rendered on the ultra setting at 1080p and got 40 uh 48 frames per second then I read it on high and got 54, but I'm kind of going for that 60 FPS so that it's always nice and smooth. Uh, then again, you could really just play it on high, but if you tweak it just a little bit like I did, I changed a couple of the uh, filters, brought it down to SMAA because on a smaller screen like, like this, you don't really see too much benefit when you bump it up uh, other than like maybe a little bit, but it's not worth the uh, FPS hit that you're gonna take. So we're gonna do a benchmark here with my custom settings and then see how that runs. And that's what I'm looking for. Look at that 67 FPS. So we're actually going over target, but it looks so good that I don't really care. Like it's, this is totally fine with me. Uh, you can maybe even turn tessellation back on if you want a little bit more bumpiness going on down there. I can see some shadows are not perfect right there, but you know, I'm gonna be playing this game. I would rather it be nice and smooth. Uh, and I think I could trade that for maybe of, of being able to see a little bit of a rough shadow here and there, even though it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's hard to complain when this already looks better than most console games. How's Oblivion? Oh, I'll show you how Oblivion is. You know, it's nice to always have a huge library of old games because you can play everything from older consoles to DOS games, but also older Windows games that are awesome. So let's, uh, let's check out Oblivion here. Yes, yes, yes. It's not that big of a deal. What? All right, well, it runs beautifully, even with an E and B and everything. So, yeah, you can definitely play these old games with all the mods and stuff like that. It'll work just fine. I don't want to talk to you. Do you want to see the game that I put the most time into? Well, it's Into the Breach. Played this game more than any other this year. All right, so the enemies, they get to move first, and then they telegraph their moves so you can see what they're going to do. The objective is to stay alive, but also protect the civilians from these giant bugs from outer space. They can basically shoot. And that's going to push this one down. And now he's going to shoot his friend right here. Ralph's just going to go stand here, stop that one from spawning. Well, I guess I'm going to shoot and push this one to the side so it doesn't hit the building at least. Didn't do any damage, but that'll work. It's a performance with um, Wii U games using Simu. When you first start, I'm using a 1080p graphics pack. When you first start, it's gonna be really sluggish for like the first time around the track because it is getting the shader cache. You'll notice a few stutters here and there. Uh, when you first start, it's actually gonna stutter so much you can't even see like, you can barely even play. So now after you play the game, play a few levels, play a few times around the track, it's gonna run silky smooth at around 60 FPS. Right now I'm getting a flat 60 FPS so capped, it looks like, at 60 FPS. And, um... Yeah, it would be much easier if I wasn't dying all the time. It'll dip down into the 40s when it gets crazy, when there's this many ah, characters on the screen at the same time. If you're doing time trials, it should never dip below 60. Get away from me with that thing, you psycho! But you will have to experience this more if you've installed this on a regular hard drive. And also, this is because, you know, like, the system is not quite as fast as something that cost two thousand dollars oh no i've had it oh, i'm dead as you can see now that i've built up the shader cache i'm running at 60 fps with no problems and it hasn't stuttered in a while so a couple times around the track and you're pretty good to go look out come on man what you gotta do that for oh shit and also every time we get an update of simu it seems to get a little bit better so let's check out breath of the wild now while we're talking about Simu. All right, so Zelda Breath of the Wild finally loaded up. If it's your first time playing it, it's gonna take 
maybe five to ten minutes to load. It takes a, quite a while. Oh, look at that. All right, so I can't decide to come over here towards the uh, Lost Woods. Get out of here. See how this runs. Uh, we're getting a couple drops into the 28th, so I might want to run it at uh, 33, 34, 36. To 28 for like a millisecond. So I might want to run uh, this area 720p, I don't know. Got a few options that I could probably also turn off. I'm using some effects and stuff. I decided to open this back up because I was using OpenGL. Because uh, I was worried about some of my effects and stuff like that not working properly. Anyway, I switched over to Vulcan. It's it's stuttering a little bit because of the shader cache, but it's generally now staying uh, in the high 50s. And I'm sure I'll have to get some of the cache, shader cache going here because it'll stutter a little bit more, but it is quite an improvement. Come on, shaders, cache. It is going to be quite an improvement after I, you know, go through this initial phase. Let it stutter a little bit. So right here I'm getting 40 FPS, uh, whereas before I hit 28 in this area. So Vulcan is going to be a much better way to play this game, as well as most of the other games. And now that they've got Vulcan support, uh, it's experimental for a lot of features, but for just playing the games, it, it works totally fine. So after the shaders get cached, it'll be really nice. Recommendations for some good indie games? Well, if you like the old school FPS like Doom and Blood and, you know, Duke Nukem 3D and stuff, uh, Hex and Heretic, you'll love a Medieval, you'll love Dusk. Iron Maiden is really, really good. It's from 3D Realms, they're back. And if you like, like, old horror PlayStation-style games, check out Paratopic. It's, like, pretty inexpensive and it's a few hours of fun. Uh, and then East Shade, if you like story games, it's kind of like Oblivion without any combat. You just, you know, experience a place, and it's pretty cool. Uh, Enderall is free if you already have um, Skyrim. This is a really cool complete conversion. It's a totally new game. It's basically a full game for free. And then, of course, if you want to play the best game ever, go ahead and grab Deus Ex. It's an old game, but still a ton of fun. And if you go to Biostar's website, you can actually get a temperature monitoring software that shows you the temperature of your system, your hard drive, uh, and also the CPU. And it's been hovering between 30, 32 and 38 since I put the uh, side panel back on. It was almost getting up to 40 with the side panel off because it's really warm in the house right now. It's like 20... It's like 20-something degrees Celsius, 28, and probably probably not that high. But with the side panel on, there's only two fans in there, plus the CPU fan, uh, and it's creating a little bit of airflow. Um, the whole idea is net air displacement, so air is coming in the front here and then going out the back, and I'm going to do a couple tests now and just see what the temperature is going to be like. There, we got a little spike. That's one thing you'll notice with the AMD CPUs and the stock coolers is they spike and then the CPU cooler will ramp up. So you might hear it, but this case has some bitumen foam, so it's really dampening uh, and doing a nice job of keeping it quiet. As right, so I've been playing here for about 20 minutes and um, my CPU is only at 51. The GPU is so low, it doesn't even matter. So yeah, 47, you can see it jumped up to, it jumps between like 58 and 47. You know, depending on what's going on. But yeah, it's working just fine. So there you have it. Maybe in a couple of months I'll end up doing another one of these videos. It's very similar, but that's specifically because the new consoles are coming out. I think it's going to share a lot of the stuff that we saw here. Maybe the GPU is going to change because of the new 30 series stuff coming out. That might bring down some different prices here and there. So stay tuned for that in a couple of months. But right now, if you need a system that's good to go, um, I highly recommend this. You're going to be able to play your games at 1080p with no problem. And also, you're going to need a mouse. So you better go get this Arctic Fox mouse. Or else, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, I'm going to go to a, an exotic animal dealer. And I'm going to get, oh, two weasels, an albermung, and an Arctic Fox. And I'm going to paint them all different colors and label them incorrectly and bring them to your house so that you have to organize them and take them back but you're not going to know what they are uh, i might even throw in a fisher cat because you don't even know what that is and then you'll have to figure out if it's a weasel or a fisher cat or what the hell is it or is it a baby wolverine you don't know but that's what i'm going to do if you don't buy one of these but you're going to buy one of these because they're awesome and also a mouse pad and get yourself a shirt so you can try to be sexy you may succeed Godspeed. See you in the comments.